this all the time. We go in, in, in cabs in London. Me and John, we go to London sometimes. <laughs> just yeah. <laughs> if we will actually do this in reality, <laughs> we probably won't say a word anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Well, taking it like that, since you're talking about each other, uh, how about describing the other band members today? How are they on the tour? And how's everybody? How's the chemistry with everybody? It's really, really excellent, actually. I mean, we're all different persons, and uh, you know, uh, Ian is the funny guy. He's totally nuts, and Mick is the dip diplomat, diplomat, diplomat in the band. And uh, Joe is uh, a very driven person. The bossy very, one. The, bo <laughs> <laughs> the bossy one. But he's a Leo, you know, so. Yeah. That's, but that's a good thing because he's a front man in this. <coughs> he's got right? a lot of fire in him. He has a lot of fire in his belly. Yep. That's a good thing for this band, you know. He's very driven and he always does everything 110%, you know, full blast all the way. It's a very good thing to have someone like that in the band. It's really Chemistry has been excellent. How did you guys get the band back together again? Well, I think the whole thing started when we did the Millennium thing. We did a couple of songs at the Millennium, the Millennium show in Sweden. In the middle of winter. And uh, just had a lot of fun and we did like just two songs, Up the Night and Final Countdown. And that's really, I think, when, when it all started, you know, start thinking about, oh, it would be really great to get back together again, you know. But then we had, you know, some obligations to do for, you know, record company, solo albums and stuff like that. And I've done a solo album now, and uh, Joey had done, you know, his last solo album. He's done three solo albums all together. And, um, I've done eight. <laughs> I have a new one coming out next year. I've done fourteen. Yeah. Never. Nobody heard of them. <laughs> Just kidding. Exactly. Just kidding. But as soon as uh, Joey was done with his <clears throat> his uh, latest, or his last solo album, I should say, for the for, for his record company, and then this whole thing came up, and uh, you know, we had a meeting and uh, decided that we should start writing some new songs and. See how it goes. You know, I think that, that uh, coming back together is something that always been in the back of our minds, on, on all of us in the band, for all these years. It's something that we always thought was going to happen someday. Yeah. Uh, it took it? twelve years. Yeah, but uh, it happened. The, the start from the dark album. How did it come about? We just uh, we just went in in a rehearsal and start. Well, first we just start doing some demos and stuff like that. I had a bunch of riffs and I, I kept sending uh, song ideas over to Joey in England. And um, you know he was writing some lyrics and some melodies for some some of my ideas and sent it back to me and uh, it sounded really cool. And, um, and he came over to Sweden. Stockholm and we just went in rehearsal and start you know rehearsing the songs and then we decided on using um, an old friend of ours uh, Kevin Nelson as a producer who also done like Journey and Mr. Big and bands like that and uh, he also did Fun Countdown so I think we wanted to work with someone that we that we knew you know it's, it's a good and we know he's a good guy and you know has a lot more experience than we do actually. He, he started his career with Leonard Skinner back in the 70s. And uh, so has a lot lots of experience. And he just came over to Sweden from the States and we did about 10 days pre-production rehearsal for the album. And it actually went really quick. You know, we went in the studio, did the whole album in about five weeks, and that was that. You know? we, we didn't want to spend too much time on it. We wanted to, you know, just go in and come play it live in the studio and, <clears throat> you know, just get a good vibe on it. Didn't want to analyze things too much. Yeah, the response has been fabulous, you know. It seems like they, it takes, 
it seems like it takes a little while for them to get used to it, <coughs> some of the new material, because it's quite different to the stuff we did in the old days, in the 80s. It's quite, it's a lot more gu guitar oriented and a uh, lot heavier, still very melodic, you know, but uh, it was quite, I think it was quite a bit of shock when they first heard it, you know. They, a lot of people thought we were just going to do like another final count or something like that, you know. We didn't want to do that. You know, that's like 18 years ago. It's like, 18 years ago, been, we got been there, done that, you know, done right. that, been there. You know, it's like, what's yeah. what's the point of? And going people who listen to, who you, when I talk to people, they say when I first heard the record, I was I was totally confused. Is this Europe? But then they say you listen for maybe five, ten times, and they, it's, it's such a grower. And I think the best albums are that way. Yeah. You shouldn't like them the first time. Or, yeah. or if you, you should well, you be a you bit kind confused of, the yeah. first time. Well, you kind of like them. You like them, but you're not quite sure in the yeah. beginning, you know. You kind of like, mm, I don't know. And then you keep listening to it a few, two, four or five times, maybe. It grows and it's like on grows on you. And then it's like, wow, this, this is one of the best albums I've ever heard. Because the records that I listen to, which I, I like immediately, I play for about a week and I never want to hear them again, you know. Right. <laughs> so, one of those things. When you, when you talk about the songs that you're using on this tour, how did you choose your playlist? Well, we just went, <clears throat> just had a meeting and went through all, the, actually didn't we all write down a list on all the songs yeah, that I we, so, yeah. that each that guy pretty, likes and yeah, then we just... It was pretty much the same. Yeah, it was pretty much the same, you know. We wanted to obviously play all the hits, but um, also there's some really cool stuff from the first two albums. Actually, we're doing songs from all the albums. All our favorites from all the, all the records. You, know. you mean which one is my favorite? Yeah. I don't have a favorite one. They're, they're, they're pretty equal to me. You know? I try to groove in, in all, all of them, you know. I think you like play like Yesterday's News and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yesterday's News is probably one of my favorites. And also the new songs from the new album, stuff from the dark and the flames. But yesterday's news is such a cool, has such a cool groove to it. You know, it's kind of it has a little bit of that Jimi Hendrix experience kind of vibe to it. You know, it's because like, it's my riff. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's his riff actually. <laughs> That's probably but yeah. So uh, yeah, it's a really groovy riff. It, it's actually it sounds like it was written by a bass player. You know? Your favorite? I would have to say yesterday's news then, I guess. <laughs> no. uh, my favorite... You know, I'm a, I'm a very song-oriented person. I like songs. I don't really look at it as uh, favorite songs to play or anything. I, I like songs like uh, Sign of the Times, uh, Flames of Love, uh, Star from the Dark, Faith. Really good songs. I like all the songs. It's really hard to, to choose favorites. Uh, what's the funniest thing that's uh, happened to each of you on the tour? Well, for me, <laughs> for me, it was uh, um, being on a tour bus, and uh, we have a, we have problems with the with the um, with the toilet door. It keeps going up all the time. It's, just, oh, you know, yeah, it's, it's well, something wrong with the lock. That has to be my funniest moment as well. Yeah. Keep on. <laughs> it was something wrong with the lock, you know, so it just keeps, you know, however you say it, fly open, you know, whatever you say. And, um, and, um, and I, I just always slams it, you know, because I get like... You were standing there talking thing. to me and yeah. the toilet door was kept opening. Yeah, kept opening in your head time. or something. You kicked yeah. it back. You kicked it back like three <laughs> times, really hard, and not realizing that it's actually someone who's trying to get out of the toilet. That's Mick, you know, the keyboard player. Oh, so Mick is. What he's, the fuck <laughs> are you doing? He's trying to open the door every time, and I think he's going up by itself. So I keep kicking it all the time, you know, like three times, really hard. The third time was really aggressive. It's like, goddamn this goddamn door, you know, and I just kept kicking it, and it's like. And then, then, then I realized that he's in there, and he always, "What's wrong with you? What are you doing?" It's like, "Oh my God, what have I done?" You know. So. Well, the boring stuff is just uh, the long, long it hours. every day, you know, all the traveling. The traveling. You have to wait. You wait for sound check, and then you wait. It doesn't sound like Charlie Watson from Stones. You wait. And then you wait. Yes. And then you wait 
some more. <laughs> yeah, it's the long uh, bus rides that are hardest, I think. You know, when you go between 10, 15 hours, you know, something like that. And it, that's really hard. It's really boring. You're just sitting around and bumming around in, the, in your bunk. It's like, and it's not like in the States, you know, when you have the night riders and you have like your own TV in each bunk and you know, have a little bit of space up to the next guy, you know. These European buses are very small, you know. Like being in a bunk is like being in a coffin, you know. So, it, you know, yeah, that's the most boring part of the whole thing. You know? A lot of waiting around and stuff like that. So, on the fun side of things, what's what's your favorite after parties? Or uh, what have, are there your after parties? What, what are you into? Yeah, sometimes it is. You know, yeah. not too much when we have like a lot of shows in the row. We, we kind of try to. If you know you have a day out. off the next day, maybe we go out to uh, like a club or something. Yeah. But sometimes, yeah. you know, it's like you get an invitation to go. Well, you invited uh, your very important persons to go to this place and. Uh, uh, VIP, you sit there and you have like a, a fence and people. This depends on what country you, you are in. But yeah, people standing there staring at yeah. you, sitting there drinking champagne, it's just trying like to an, have fun. It's like an animal in a cage, you know. It's like I mean, loud it was like music that. Music after a show, I can't hear. When we were in Italy, in Italy, it was like that. Yeah, that was that was pretty nuts. They were pretty nuts there. This in Italy, in Spain, in those countries, you know, very high. Um, Tempered kind of people, you know. but it's still good, you know. But uh, we, we, when we did the summer festivals and stuff, we did a lot more partying because then you usually only do like three shows a week, you know, you, mainly on on the weekends, you know. So on Friday and Saturday we do the gigs, and um, then you have like a whole week to recover, you know, for the next <laughs> to the next weekend, you know, we go out again. So so you then, just about recovered. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Week. Exactly. It takes quite a long time these days. It's not like when you were 18, you know, when you just slept like, you know, the next day you felt fine. But it doesn't work like that anymore. It takes about two or three days, you know, to recover. But on this tour now, when we'll be doing like three or four shows in a row, then it's kind of like, you know, you just have to take it easy. You, know? you just have to, you know, concentrate on your music. That's the main thing, you know, because. You don't you don't want to wake up having a hangover, you know, and, and go on stage. You know, that's no fun. You, know. you never make the right decisions then either when you have a hangover. I can't do this anymore. I'm out of here. And then you wake up like a week later on. And it's like, oh shit, what have I done? 